Alrighty guys, it is the middle of May. So we are here for my mid month wrap up. And I'm sure some of you guys are going to be shocked by some of these ratings. I do have quite a bit of unpopular opinions yet again. So we have one DNF, we have multiple two star reads. We didn't hit any threes this month this far. And then we have multiple four star reads and a 4.75 that honestly I continue to think about and continue to think if I should bump it up or not. But let's jump on in the first two books I have here. I actually read the first book in this series at the end of April, continued on with the next two books and read this series back to back to back which I don't do quite often and sometimes I can't do but I will get more into this series as we talk about them. As you can see it is the Dreamland Billionaire series by Lauren Asher. I have here book two which is Terms and Conditions and in this one actually let's start at the beginning here. In this series we follow the Kane brothers and their grandfather is the owner of Dreamland. Now, when you think about Dreamland, it is kind of like Disney World and their whole conglomeration. Like they have the theme park, they have the media aspect. That is essentially what Dreamland is. Now for the Kane brothers, their grandfather ends up passing away. And in order to get their inheritance, they have tasks that they need to complete. Now in this book, we follow Declan, who is destined to be the CEO of the media aspect of things. So we follow him and in order to get his inheritance, he must marry and have an heir. So that is his task in this book. So we have also our main female character who is Iris. Now Iris works for Declan and it is a marriage of convenience and just to see their romance unfold is really really neat. It's really really different and I just so enjoyed this book. I have to say I think this book was actually it was this book was actually my first marriage of convenience book and I absolutely ate it up. I love Lauren Asher's writing but before we get into Lauren Asher's writing let me talk about book three and then I'll kind of talk about the series as a whole. I did end up giving this book four stars and then we have the final offer which this one follows Callahan and Alana and Callahan is that brother where you're like you know in series where you're like I need this brother's book that is Callahan. I feel like that book is always kind of like the last in the series to come out. But anyway, in this one, like I said, we follow Callahan. Callahan is that brother that everyone knows has issues. He is an alcoholic. He has been to rehab numerous times. He's just kind of the brother that everyone kind of looks down upon because he has these issues. And for him to get his grandfather's inheritance, he has to go back to the family's house in Lake Wisteria and he has to spend the summer there before selling the house. Now there is a caveat there because when Callahan goes to spend the summer at this lake house, he finds out quickly that the woman he was in love with is living there. So it is technically her house as well. So that is there and I absolutely ate this book up. The one thing I do have to say about this one in particular is that it did feel kind of a bit long. So this is, let me see, I know it reaches the, it almost reaches the 600 page mark. It is 583 pages. So it did feel quite a bit long but I enjoyed Callahan's story the most because I felt like he had the most character development and I feel like he was dealing with heavier topics and heavier things that he had to get through and just seeing that process and seeing how both Callahan and Alana work through that together you just fall in love with all of the characters of this series. I did end up giving this one a 4.25 stars and I do think it could have been higher had this book just been a bit shorter but again I get why it was long there was a lot of character development a lot of character growth so those were the two books I read in this series now I do have to say about Lauren Asher's writing in general because I did want to touch on this she is one romance author where I find 
she has very quick, easy, fast paced reads. And she is someone I go to when I am in a slump. I picked up the first book when I was in a slump and I am so glad I did. I was really hesitant to read this series because it is about a theme park and a like conglomeration like Disney. I thought I would have like no interest in these would be like, I don't know, just kind of boring in a way. But these exceeded my expectations just like the other Lauren Asher books I have read. I have read her Dirty Air series and enjoyed that series as well. But she is a go-to author for fast, quick, easy reads. And I do have to say that sometimes when I read romance series, depending on the author, it's not always, I will have to put the books down and then come back. So like once I'm done a book, I'll be like, okay, I need to take a break and then come back because sometimes the characters just kind of feel very similar or the spice just feels very similar. And I find with Lauren Asher's writing, her characters are very distinct. Their personalities are very distinct. So that is one thing that I absolutely love about her books. So that finishes up the Dreamland Billionaire series. Now moving on, I actually let you guys choose what you wanted to see in a reading vlog. There were options between reading books from the same author and ranking them. There was another option where I read series and then the last option was reading books by popular authors who I have not read from yet. And you guys picked reading popular books from authors I have not read from yet and I was so excited about this. I had five star anticipations. I was just expecting amazing reads and I have to say it didn't go as planned. It surely did not go as planned. So like I said, this was in a reading vlog. I will link that vlog down below in case you missed it. That is where I go like full in depth into these books and what I thought about them. As far as what we're going to talk about here, it's just going to be kind of quick and easy since I did spend an hour in that vlog talking about these books. But anyway, the first one I picked up in this vlog was Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. I had really high expectations because I saw a lot of romance readers say a lot of great things about this book. I also had high expectations because it's Tessa Bailey. And you can see my bookmark is still in here. I did not get very far at all. I am on chapter six. And I kind of should have expected, I don't want to say I should have expected it because I like to try books on my own for myself because I do have unpopular opinions often and the writing style just did not work for me. That's what it comes down to. The writing style was not for me. I felt like within the first six chapters, there was a lot of repetition. There was were choices I didn't like to the point where I was having to reread the sentences over and over again. And there was even descriptions that were just like, mm, I don't know, really threw me off. I did read one in the reading vlog. Now let me see if I can find it because it really threw me, here we go. So this description threw me off and I felt like it was kind of out of place for this book. But anyway, here we go. It says, despite the wicked stepmother of headaches currently crushing his skull beneath the toe of her boot, his limbs were kind of jumpy. An indistinct memory poked the back of his neck like a bony finger. And like, why I think the writing is beautiful, I, I also just don't kind of vibe with it. So while the writing can be beautiful to some people, I also think there are other people who are not going to vibe with her books. And that is me. I don't vibe with this book. We have our main characters here. We have Wells and we have Josephine. Now Wells was this very, very well known golfer. He is now currently in a slump. He goes to alcohol and you know, he is just not doing well golfing. And then we have Josephine who is like his ultimate fan, even though he's not doing well, she's like, okay, well, he's on a brink of a comeback and like follows him around to tours and you know they have this encounter in the first part of the book here and it doesn't go well because obviously Wells is not in the right headspace he's not doing good golfing and Josephine's just this like you know very optimistic person and is like don't worry like you're gonna get it back and he's like no like I'm done and we see in the book here in the beginning he's just like I give up and like stops golfing and then it's just so weird because we have Wells knowing that Josephine is like his number one fan and like thinks very highly of him. And it's just one day, like three weeks later after the encounter with her, something happens like a natural disaster type of thing. And he's like, oh my gosh, is she okay? Like I need to keep her safe. And I'm like, 
dude, it's three weeks later. Three weeks later, what? And like, you don't know this girl. All you know is that she's your fan and like, otherwise, I don't know. Like I said, I don't vibe with this book. This was the DNF for the first half of the month. And I don't know if I will pick up another Tessa Bailey book because like I said, the writing style is just not for me. So if you've read more Tessa Bailey books and if you've read this one in particular, let me know if her writing style is just this way or like if I might like another Tessa Bailey book. I usually don't give up on authors, but when I know their writing style is not for me, it's just not for me. So DNF. Moving on to the next book that I read in that reading vlog for you guys. And I am so excited about this one. I cannot wait to talk to you guys about this one. This is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. And oh, I am so glad you guys actually ended up picking this book for me. So I gave you guys the option over on the community tab to pick which book you wanted to see me read, either this one or the Love Hypothesis. And obviously you guys chose this one. And I am so glad I had so much fun with this. This was my first book in the Omegaverse and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much because this is not only a romance, there's a mystery in here. There's just so much going on that you are never bored. You're always intrigued. It's so much fun. So anyway, we have our main characters. We have Misery and Lo. And Misery is a vampire, Lo is a werewolf. And just to give a little backstory, Misery has been used as a collateral for the vampire community her entire life essentially. So when she was younger she was sent to live with the humans as collateral for this peace treaty type of deal. And so she is living with the humans. Well, when this treaty is over, she comes back to live with the vampires only for a short time and decides on her own to go back and live with the humans. Essentially, she doesn't really have a solid place for her to feel like it's home. And you get to see her deal with this on a whole nother level throughout this book. Like there is nowhere she kind of fits in. And it's really neat to see her also kind of disguise herself in the human world and how that ends up working out. And then we have Lo who is the alpha of this werewolf pack and we get to see him and his pack and like this found family and it's just such a great time. So anyway, this book starts right off chapter one with marriage of convenience between Lo and Misery. And this is another peace treaty sort of pact. And Misery is going to marry Lo and live with the werewolves. And Lo is giving up his mate to the vampires for this treaty, you know, peace treaty type of deal. And their wedding, you can feel the tension in the first chapter. And oh, I adored this. In case you can't tell, I am so glad I read this. So glad I picked up an Allie Hazelwood book. This was a 4.75 stars and I debate on bringing it up to a five star. I don't know why I rated it 4.75 stars. Honestly, there was nothing really wrong with this book and I looked forward to picking it up every single time. I never wanted to put it down. I was constantly intrigued. Like I said, there is a mystery aspect of this book as well. And the ending, man, the ending, I need another book. Anyway, 4.75 stars probably going to be a five star by the end of the month if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. If you have not picked this book up, what are you doing? Anyway, bride. <laughs> In case you couldn't tell, I am just, I loved that book. But anyway, moving on to the final book I read in that reading vlog and that is The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. A lot of you guys have been asking me to pick up a Sarah Adams book and just praising her books. So I was excited to finally pick up one of her books. Now in this one, we follow two friends from high school. They've been best friends since high school. That is where they met. And like the instant they met, they became best friends. And it's really cool to see their relationship. Now, Nathan is a NFL player. He is very wealthy. And then we have Brie. And Brie was a ballerina and she was supposed to go to Juilliard but got into an accident that stopped her from going there and now she owns a ballet studio in LA. Brie is also kind of struggling because obviously she lives in LA. She has a dance studio in LA and on top of that she is providing ballet lessons for individuals 
who wouldn't necessarily be able to afford them otherwise. And she is doing this on an income based tuition type of program. So not only does she live in an expensive area and have rent for a studio in an expensive area, but she's not making enough to constantly keep up with her rent of both places. So there is that. We see an in-depth look into Nathan and Brie's relationship in this book. I do have to say you start off two chapters with Brie and then you get into Nathan's point of view. And I do find that Nathan's point of view in this book is just a tad bit more intriguing and I don't know, more interesting than Brie's. I do have to say I enjoyed Nathan's chapters more, but Brie is, I feel like, the majority of the point of view in this book. And... <sighs> what I thought about this book. I see I have a hard time and I did this in the reading vlog as well. I have a hard time saying whether I enjoyed it or I didn't enjoy it. It's not that I enjoyed it. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was okay. And here are my reasons why. I thought the miscommunication in this book was just a little too much. Like it's a little too much. On top of that I felt like the characters were very immature. I see I always say I don't like the miscommunication trope. I don't mind it because I feel like it's in a lot of romance books. I mind it when it's miscommunication combined with immaturity and I feel like that's what this was. Because I felt like the characters were immature, mostly Brie, if I'm being quite honest. I felt like Brie was very immature. I thought her actions were very immature. The things she said were very immature and I know I'm repeating very immature but that's just how I felt. So that was something in here and then the ending also that ending man it, it was so rushed i know a lot of people say more about the ending in this one and i'm sure if you have not read this book already you may already know the ending because a lot of people talk about it but i'm not going to spoil it it was rushed the premise behind it i just didn't enjoy it so anyway this was an okay book. I can see why people do love it. It is a very lighthearted read. I can see where people have fun reading it, but I also do have to say that if I did not have the audiobook for this book, this would have taken me forever to read because every time I picked it up physically, I just wanted to put it right back down. So the audiobook is what got me through this one. So I am so thankful for that. And I do recommend that if you do want to read this, grab that audiobook. Uh, it was a lifesaver, honestly. And I am going to continue on and read more Sarah Adams books. Like I said with Tessa Bailey, it was her writing style. With Sarah Adams, it wasn't her writing style. It was just the way this book was, the miscommunication combined with the immaturity, the characters. So I want to continue on with her books to see if I enjoy other characters of hers and other tropes and you know I just want to dive more into her books and not give up on her just because of this one. So I ended up giving this one a 2.75. Now do I still think that's quite a bit generous? I do but that is what we landed on for the cheat sheet. Again I will link that reading vlog down below in case you missed it. Now for the final book that I've read so far this month I got this as an arc and I was excited to get it. <laughs> But I have some things to say. This one is Freaking Romance Volume 2 by Snail Lords. And I was anticipating getting some clarity from this one. And there was no clarity. There was none. I was very underwhelmed. I was kind of taken back at a lot of the things that were going on. I just feel like this book has no end in sight and it's just kind of being dragged out and oh, as you can tell I don't have very many good things to say about it. I do have to say I do appreciate the art in it but I appreciated the art in volume one more than I appreciated the art in this volume. I feel like the art kind of took a hit and even though I appreciated it I still kind of feel like it was lacking compared to the first volume. It also didn't help that the arc was watermarked so I was like trying to read around the watermark. It was not a lovely experience. I do have to say though that it is a fast read just like the first volume and there are some issues that are talked upon in this one that I think are beneficial from you know people to learn from and I do see how people think 
that these books are fun reads but to me honestly I just found it kind of more irritating than anything and I'm kind of sad because I held on to book one thinking you know what I might pick up book two and this series might be a huge hit I can't wait for some clarity and I just didn't get any of it in this volume so I ended up giving this one two stars I don't want to go too much into the book because like I said it is volume two I do have to say if you like graphic novels that like keep you wondering this might be for you, but just know you're still not going to get clarity in volume two and you're just going to be even more confused. And it is very highly rated. So again, this is an unpopular opinion. And that ends up wrapping up my mid-month wrap up. But I want to know, guys, have you read any of these books? What were your thoughts on them? And even if your opinions are different from mine, please leave them down below. That is A-OK. -okay. I love seeing everyone's different opinions. I think that's what's fun about reading is everything is so subjective. So let me know if you've read any of these books. Also, let me know what you've read this month so far. Did you have any five star reads? Did you have any DNFs? I want to know it all. Leave it down in the comments. Thanks guys for sticking with me for this video. I appreciate each and every single one of you and I will see you guys soon.